Hi folks, this is Andy Skinner. I'm going to show you how to use the Real-Time Historical Data Collector program. I'll use the RAMP program to set it up. First thing I will do is go up to File and I will select Input Data Format and now I'll select Quote Center. After selecting Quote Center you can see the Real-Time Historical Data program has popped up and this is a separate standalone program. What it's doing right now is connecting to Quote Center. Now I happen to already have Quote Center running on this computer, you can see here. Uh, if I did not, it would automatically start it for me. I'll minimize that just to get it out of the way for now. And up at the top, you can see the three channels have opened. And looking down here at the, the symbols that were selected, they are the Dow 30 stocks. I have 30 stocks, and three channels have been opened. You can see here, maximum number of data channels. 3. A data channel is a live open connection to the Quote Center data server and you can select how many live open connections you would like to have. For now I'm going to click on stop all and the three data channels will disappear. I'm going to go back into the RAMP program and show you how to make changes. Here I'll click on input data format and Quote Center and you see the yellow button that says select time per bar and symbols. When I click on that you can see I've enabled the time per bar. In this case I'm going to say that I'd like to have 5 minute and 30 minute charts. I've selected my time frame. I could select one or all eight if I want to. I'll click apply and a window will pop up that will allow me to select the symbols that I would like to have the 5 and 30 minute time frames on. In this case, I'll select the Dow 30 just to make it very quick, and uh, you can see the 30 stocks show up here. You can also select your own symbols or create your own list. Here's a video to show you how to do that. I'm going to click Use This List, and up pops the Real-Time Historical Data Collector Program, and it will automatically connect. You can see it's connecting to data channels right now, and there are the three data channels. Now, I requested uh, that we have 5 minute and 30 minute charts on the Dow 30 stocks. That's a total of six, 60 combinations. That's two time frames times 30 stocks. And I refer to a time frame symbol as a data set. So we have 60 data sets that we're collecting. I have three channels to collect them in. That means I would need to have 20 data sets, symbol time frames, per channel. So I've selected three channels, so each one of these will loop through 20 data sets each. Let's look at channel number one, and I'll explain what these numbers mean. The number one means, of course, this is channel one. This is six of 20. That means it just flashed to seven. Seven, the seventh symbol of 20 in the list. L1 means loop one. That means it's the first time it's gone through the 20 symbols. And then it shows me the symbols. The current one is BAC, Bank of America, 5-Minute Charts. This would be a good place for me to show you the Windows Task Manager. The thing to remember about this is connecting to a data channel on a new symbol can consume quite a bit of CPU. I want to show you two different ways of doing this. In this case, I have 60 data sets. I'm putting them through three different channels. That means as soon as one is done, the request has to close for that symbol, open a new symbol, and download new data. Now it only downloads the data it needs, but it does consume quite a bit of computer CPU to be opening and closing those data sets all the time. There's actually a better way to do it, and I'll show you how to do that and conserve your CPU time. I'm going to go down here and click Stop All. And because I have 60 data sets, I'm going to select 60 channels. That way I'll put a data set in its own separate channel. The next item down is dwell between data requests in seconds. If I have 60 open channels, and one of them is saying Bank of America 5 minute, for example, when it downloads the latest data for that, it will be only a few seconds old as it's received, and the channel will automatically want to do it again. It is really ridiculous to have the channel downloading data continuously 
every second. That's more than you need and it causes unnecessary CPU and internet traffic. So you can slow it down a little bit. And here I've asked it for every 10 seconds to update the data. So it will actually dwell 10 seconds before it updates. Notice that the background color has turned red and it's telling me now that it's been some time since the last data was received. This is to notify you that no data is coming in. Uh, that's simply because I clicked on stop and I shut off all the data channels. As soon as I turn them back on that will start up again. But that's a warning to you to tell you you may have an internet connection issue or for some other reason you've stopped receiving data. Now in this case I want 60 channels because I have 60 symbols. 10 seconds between updates on each channel just to slow it down a little bit and I'll click apply changes. And you can see uh, as this thing gets started it'll start opening 60 channels. Here's the first one and as soon as one is open it'll open the next and it's just walking across opening 60 live data channels. It'll take it a minute for about for 60 of these to open and once they're open you'll be using very little CPU time very little internet traffic because all it's doing is updating the current bar and that takes very little work at all you can have up to 500 of these channels open depending on the CPU and memory in your computer and you of course would have to fine-tune this to what you want to do I would recommend you keep the number down under 200 for performance issues but that's entirely dependent on you if you want better performance you can actually increase the dwell time which reduces the load on the CPU I've added all of this in here because no two computers are the same. Everybody wants to trade different symbols, different number of symbols, and this will allow you to fine tune how you set it up. Your dwell time, you can pick how many channels you want open. Of course, you'll select how many time frames and stocks. Although it will perform beautifully with 500 symbols, but as you can see, it'll just take a little while to get them all running. The real time consumption, the real CPU consumption here, is opening the channel in the first place. When you look up at the, at the data channels here, you'll see the flash in yellow. Uh, the flash of yellow means that was an update, and it's happening every 10 seconds on each one of these cells. You can see it takes very little computer time at all. The real computer time is getting the channel opened and started. And that's why only one at a time is being done so it doesn't overload your computer. I have the 60 channels open now. They're all ready to go. You really don't have to wait for all 60 channels to be open. Uh, you can see my CPU usage is, is very much in control for 60 open data channels. It'll probably start dropping because there's not really much for it to do except just do the updates. And now you can see that I'm running Bob charts on 5 minute and 30 minute symbols and the, the focus of this video is how to connect to data so I'm going to close that and leave the charts completely. That's pretty much how to connect. I'll leave it up to you to experiment with how many open data channels you want to use and the dwell between data channels. There are four settings. You can select the number of time frames the number of symbols, how many open data channels you want to use, and you can select the dwell between updates for each data channel. I highly recommend that you try and use one symbol per data channel and your data will be very current within a few seconds on all of them simultaneously. It won't have to roll through them, loading and reloading, and you'll just have much better success. Now that's not to say you can't do it the other way. You can but with a little experience and practice at this, you'll become a master at it. In the next section, I'll show you how to sign up for the Quote Center data service. You do need that service to run this program.